Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Blue Rat Artifact Synergy deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the deck features a ton of new cards from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, almost looks like a block constructed deck. And one of the key cards in our deck is Mind Link Mech, a 3 mana for 3 artifact vehicle with flying. Crew cost is just 1, and whenever the mech becomes crewed for the first time each turn, until end of turn, the mech becomes a copy of target non legendary creature that crewed it this turn except it's a 4-3, it's a vehicle artifact in addition to its other types, and it has flying. So the Mind Link mech basically copies one of the properties of the creatures that crewed it, so it can be very synergistic with something like Lizard Blades, which has double strike, so if we crew the mech with our Lizard Blades, the Mind Link mech also gains double strike and can attack for 8. Then we've got Acquisition Octopus, which lets us draw a card when the creature deals combat damage to a player, so if we crew our Mindling mech with the octopus, we can deal 4 and draw a card. And then we also have the Patchwork Automaton, which is not obvious at first sight, but it turns into a creature saying whenever we cast an artifact spell, put a plus one plus one counter on the Patchwork Automaton. So if we crew our Mindling mech with the Automaton and play an artifact afterwards, then the Mindling mech will also pick up that plus one plus one counter, which will stay on the mech even if it turns back into an artifact end of turn. So those are all great synergies with our Mindlink mech. Then another key card is the Enthusiastic Mechanaut, a 2 mana 2-2 two, two artifact creature with flying, saying artifact spells we cast cost 1 generic mana less to cast, and almost every card in our deck is an artifact which will benefit from that 1 mana discount, so turn 2 Mechanaut can lead to some explosive starts. Then Patchwork Automaton is also great as a 1-1 one, one with a Ward 2, and whenever we cast an artifact spell, put a plus one plus one counter on the automaton, so we'll quickly grow over time, especially if we can play a ton of artifacts thanks to the Mechanaut. And then Magda, Brazen Outlaw, also has great synergy in our deck as a 2-1, saying other dwarves we control get plus one plus so not too relevant. But whenever a dwarf we control becomes tapped, we create a treasure token. So by crewing the Mindling mech with Magda, we can potentially generate a treasure token which will help us cast our other spells and can also potentially sacrifice 5 treasures to search your library for an artifact or dragon card and put it onto the battlefield. No dragons in this deck, but plenty of artifacts to potentially search up. And then another great synergy with Magda is the one from Moonsnare Prototype. A 1 mana artifact can tap alongside an untapped artifact or creature we control to add colorless mana. So we can use the prototype to tap Magda and generate colorless mana alongside a treasure token. And then for 5 mana we can also channel it by discarding it from our hand. And then the owner of target null and permanent puts it on the top or bottom of their library. So it can be a nice uncounterable removal spell. And then we also have the full playset of a Voltage Surge as more interaction, dealing 2 damage to a creature or planeswalker, unless we sacrifice an artifact as we cast it, in which case we can deal 4 damage instead. So there's not too many artifacts we're happy to sacrifice, but of course we can always sacrifice a treasure token from Magda, or maybe sacrifice an Iron Apprentice, which is a 0 0, enters with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, and when the apprentice dies, if it had counters on it, we can put those counters onto target creature we control. So it can also benefit from the double strike on Lizard Blades, as getting more power on a double striking creature is quite powerful. And we can also potentially sacrifice the Apprentice at instant speed with the Voltage Surge to maybe move that counter somewhere else to maybe mess up combat for the opponent. Then, of course, Lizard Blades, a 1 1 artifact creature with double strike, can be reconfigured, so it turns into an equipment, giving the equipped creature double strike instead. So it can also play well with one of our large creatures, maybe we can put it on a flyer, and also plays very nicely with the Acquisition Octopus, a 2 2 artifact creature that also reconfigures for 2 mana, and then turns into an equipment, saying that when the equipped creature deals damage to an opponent, we get to draw a card. So this ability plus double strike allows us to draw 2 cards in one attack step. And then the mana base also includes the full playset of Den of the Bugbear as a creature land to keep up the pressure. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Turn 2, I've got a few options. Mechanaut can maybe help empty my hand faster. So I think that's going to be my pick here. And then next turn I could maybe go Automaton into Mind Link Mech. Up against what looks like a blue-red mill deck. Alright, so diversifying with a vehicle 
place around the sweeper better. And we can apply quite a bit of early pressure. So don't really mind this matchup. Automaton into Mind Link Mech. And then if we crew the Mind Link Mech with Mechanauts, we can potentially get a 2 mana discount on all our artifacts. Usually not very relevant, but can come up. Opponent does have the Cinderclasm, sadly, to blow up our 2-2 two -two creatures. But we still have Lizard Blades to crew the mech and hit them for a healthy amount. And probably fine to play a tap to den so we can animate one next turn. As opposed to maybe like reconfiguring the blades onto the other blades so it's safe from removal. Which is also an option. I think I'll just play a tap land. And then the blue red deck doesn't have a ton of instant speed removal to necessarily kill the 4 3 flyer. So hopefully we can get some good damage in. Still have 41 cards remaining. So they'll need more mill effects besides Rune Crab. Although Evolving Wilds is another 6. Our curve also isn't incredibly high, so Hideous Laughter will be quite effective. And yeah, there it is. Down to 23 cards now. Let's see, does Voltage Surge kill the opponents? I think it does. We can play Lizard Blades. Crew the Mind Link mech with it. And then Voltage Surge, sacrificing the tap Lizard Blades. Deals 4. And we hit them for 10 exactly. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Although I guess sadly can't play prototype on turn one. Still probably a keeper. And then turn two, go for Magda. Unless we want to protect her from removal. All right, I guess mono white aggro. Probably not necessary unless they have a portable hole. So we'll play Magda. Next turn we can play Mech, which can already make a treasure with Magda. Right, opponent's got to turn to Aspirin, sadly. Take three. Another Lizard Blades. So we'll go for Mind Link Mech, could also play the prototype afterwards with the treasure. Doesn't seem worth it. So we'll just have a 4-3 on defense here essentially. Aspirin grows Usher, which can get in for 4. And Brutal Cathar can exile Magda. But not before we make a treasure. Okay, so I could use Prototype to get rid of Brutal Cathar. And then crew the Mind Link mech again. Might be better off just going double Lizard Blades, hitting them for 8, and then having a double Striker on defense. That seems fine. And then maybe next turn we'll prototype if needed. Right, adversary can pump the team. So Aspirin probably pumps itself so it can attack past the blades. And we're gonna take a lot of damage here. Nope, opponent pumps the adversary instead. So we can still remove the adversary at least with the prototype. Take eight. And another Magda the draw. 
so got eight in the air. Can use prototype to bounce adversary. Don't think Den of the Bugbear is necessarily getting involved this turn. Although let's see if I animate Den, crew the mech, attack. Yeah, they would just block the 1-1 one, one token from Den with adversary to gain 5, so that seems bad. So scratch that. So instead, probably just crew the mech, hit for 8, have a bunch of creatures on defense. And then Magda can make a treasure to let me use the prototype at instant speed. That seems fine. Alright, let's pass it back. And then Magda can block before having to use prototype. So it's going to be close. If they have more interaction, we could be dead. Usher's fine. Put on to tax. And then... Yeah, I'll have to block with both Magda and Lizard Blades. Otherwise, we still take lethal. And then... Block, crew the mech. Should have actually switched these blocks around so we killed the aspirant after bouncing adversary without losing the lizard blades. But it shouldn't really matter here. Alright, and then crew the mech to cross the finish line. Awesome, very close game against Mono White Aggro. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a promising hand. Prototype giving us a small mana boost early, which could come in handy. Especially when it comes to reconfiguring some of our creatures. Up against Mono Red Aggro. So an early patchwork automaton can give us a good blocker. And then next turn Mind Link Mech, Octopus can let us draw a card with it. Opponent does hit us for three already, so they're off to a nice start as well. Magda. Okay, so if I play Magda, can tap with Prototype, I can still play the mech. And then I guess we'll keep Automaton back so I can crew mech to block the 2-2 Haster that's coming off the enchantment. Although I don't really want to lose the mech to a burn spell here necessarily. Because without Mind Link mech our hand becomes a lot less exciting. So if we crew the Mind Link mech on defense with the Patchwork Automaton it will also gain the Ward 2 ability. So it does have some built-in protection against spot removal. So it should be relatively safe to crew and block here. Alright, that worked out, great. Alright, just a second main Epicure. So it looks like the mech is safe. A royal Eruption kills Magda, that's fine. Okay, so I can crew mech with Automaton, so it picks up an extra counter if we play Octopus. Or I can crew with the Octopus, so it draws a card, which is probably better. And then I can also reconfigure onto the Automaton. Yeah, that should work. Alright, so we get to potentially draw two cards here. That's pretty sweet. 
Although I guess never mind, we had to tap the octopus, so now I won't be able to tap it to reconfigure. So I guess we'll just hit for seven and draw one. And I can play another prototype if I want to. Although I might want to use that as removal instead. So I'll pass. Yeah, would it have been better to copy the automaton then and reconfigure Octopus onto it? Maybe. Opponent's got an Igneous Inspiration, can kill automaton thanks to Ward. Goes face. And they can maybe learn for a way to destroy artifacts, start from scratch. Can take out the Mind Link mech perhaps. Goes for Expanded Anatomy instead. And take three. Mechanaut could be fun. Doesn't discount the channel ability, sadly. So what sequence are we going with here? Play Mechanaut, which can crew the Mind Link mech. Although its ability is not particularly exciting. So instead I could crew the mech with Octopus and then reconfigure it onto the Automaton afterwards. And still play this to grow the Automaton. And then we'll see what we draw afterwards with the Octopus's ability. And then I can maybe tap the Mechanauts to um, reconfigure. Or I can keep more mana available and an extra blocker. And see what we draw first. Which is also reasonable. Yeah, I guess keeping a blocker back might be safer. Alright, just a land. So... Don't have anything else going on here. Can channel this. Could reconfigure Octopus somewhere, which I guess is reasonable. If I reconfigure this, I guess it would still be tapped. So even if they kill Mechanaut, it's not like I get a 2-2 blocker all of a sudden, but might still be worth it. And pass. There is a combination of burn spells that can kill me here. Otherwise, I'm probably happy to chump. And next turn, then, of the bugbear can become active as well. Opponent sacrifices the blood token, discarding a smashing. So they're digging for the perfect set of spells here to finish out the game. Alright, and our opponent cannot find it and scoops it up. Sweet, so close game against Monored. But yeah, Mindling Mech once again, showing all its powerful synergies in the deck. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Let's see what we're up against. A red-green. Keep a Voltage Surge and then Mach 9 to Mech looks good. A Renegade. Alright, so maybe a modified aggro deck. That doesn't die to the Voltage Surge. Do I still want to play Magda? Or do we wait? I think we still go for her. The red-green modified deck doesn't have a ton of removal, just a Kami's Flare. So not too unlikely for Magda to survive, but opponent does have the Kami's Flare. At least it's not with plus two damage. And then I think we still play the mech. So next turn we can crew it with a Lizard Blades. Could also crew with Octopus to draw a card, but maybe it's better to get in more damage, we'll see. Another Renegade. So if we can keep up removal for their one modified creature, the Renegades aren't too threatening. So, close call, I guess Octopus keep up Surge is more mana efficient. Even though applying more pressure could also be worth it. But I also wouldn't mind drawing more 
action here. Pass it back. Opponent does have another Kami's Flare. Do I want to sack it to Voltage Surge to kill a Renegade? I guess so. Take one. And then Magda and Lizard Blades are both pretty good. So I guess we can play both and then I can crew mech using both just to make the treasure but still copy the double strike from the blades. And attack. And I guess yeah Magda being a legendary means it can't be the target of the Mindling Max ability. Opponent takes eight, and next turn we can turn on Den of the Bugbear as well. So our opponent finally gets their third land, but it's too little too late, and our opponent explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with pretty single-minded hand, but could still work out if we're up against a creature deck where Voltage Surge is good. And then probably fine to play a prototype. And then next turn can basically play the apprentice for free alongside maybe a two drop. All right, generous visitors, your opponent on a green white enchantment deck. Certainly something worth taking out with a voltage surge. But we can wait and see. Maybe they play a rune on their visitor so we can deny the card draw. And then next turn we can play Mind Link Mech. It's gonna be Companion. Right. We play the Mech now. Naturalist also worth taking out. And a Rune of Might for one mana on Companion. Okay, so I can play Mech and Voltage Surge. So if I want to play Mech and Voltage Surge, then I would have to tap either Apprentice or Mech, which means I wouldn't be able to hit for four. So is that still worth it? I think so, because that will allow me to then uh, potentially crew both mechs next turn. And then I'll still have a 4-3 on defense to block the companion. And then next turn we can hit for 8 in the air. Another naturalist, okay. So we found a home for all these copies of Voltage Surge. Companion against lifelink, that's fine. Might make it all more difficult to race. Ooh. Opponent maybe forgot we can crew on defense as well. If you're not used to playing against vehicles, that's an easy one to miss. And there's Magda now too. So, a lot of options. Can get Magda out there. Crew a mech with it. And then red mana take out naturalists before they get more mana discounts. And hit for nine. Okay, and now we're just uh, lizard blades away from victory. Runeforge Champion can maybe still save the day here with a couple runes, including a lifelink. A rune of speed, that's fine. And they had a rune of sustenance in hand already. Take three. And a voltage surge, why not? Okay, so crew both. Uh, 
And then should I do this now or wait for them to play another rune? I guess we can wait, even though I can get one more damage in by sacrificing an apprentice to put a counter somewhere. But might as well make them waste another rune. Could also just sank the treasure token now, which is probably better. Alright, naturalist lets them play runes for free. And a showdown. Do I want to respond now by killing the champion before they can play more stuff out, like a rune of speed on naturalists? Sure. They can play one more rune out. And our opponent explodes, awesome. So yeah, we faced a nice variety of decks today. Mono red aggro, mono white aggro, Naya runes. Of course, got pretty lucky to draw a lot of interaction in this last matchup. And uh, overall, pretty impressed by Mind Link Mech and the various synergies. Now, doesn't necessarily make this a tier one strategy since we did get pretty lucky drawing the Mind Link Mech in most matchups. But outside of the vehicle, we still have lots of powerful synergies like the Patchwork Automaton, Magda plus Prototype to generate extra mana. So there's definitely some uh, powerful tools here for a nice blue-red artifact deck, and I'm sure it's only going to get better as more powerful artifacts get printed in future expansions. And most of the cards also being from Kamigawa means that it's probably going to be in standard for quite some time to come. So it should be a relatively safe investment if this looks like a fun strategy to you but again don't expect it to perform like other tier 1 strategies so that'll do it for today's gameplay want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day i also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd